And before we can start with our hash map, we still need to define a hash function. So let's do that. I'll define a function called hash. It'll return a number. And there's an arrow function. So what's the input value? We can actually kind of peek at our equals because our hash will have the same restrictions the equals have has. And we want to run the equals on the same values as the hash has and um, in, in case of the hash map. I'll duplicate the types over. We can consider eventually refactoring this into a common type of um, that have structural equality computable or something. For now, I'll just uh, replace equalable with hashable. everywhere. That is not what I wanted to do. Hashable. And has native equality is also called has native hashability. Hashable object, hashable, okay. They're all there now. So our input is a object or a hashable of shape hashable. We don't know what it is exactly. Let me zoom in a bit more. There's a very good reason I stole the, uh, I have the equals open on the right side because this is essentially the exact same thing with exact same checks, except that we don't check against another one, but the logic is the same. So there's also a potential for refactoring this at some point of time, but for now it's not. Um, maybe I should explain the goal of the hash function first. So the goal of the hash function is to compute a number value from our object that we can then use to index into an array in the hash map later. And there are some desirable properties of this. I'm not going to go into the exact properties of hash functions and what's desirable and not. Um, suffice it to say, that's a very interesting uh, subject of study and I'm sure you can look it up. Maybe I'll address it closer in a follow-up video. I don't know if there's demand for it. But the simple answer is we want to convert an object to a number. So for that, we're gonna check if it's a null, like always, because if a hashable is null, hashable equals null, we just don't really know what to do. Let's just return a value. It doesn't really matter which one it is because it's gonna be constant. The next thing we need to check is if our hashable is of type String, for example. Then we can return. Hmm, I should explain this. I have a hash function here that can hash a string. It takes in a seed that will offset the hash function and a string which to hash. Now, I didn't add a hash function for hashing numbers or other things like a boolean, we're going to think about that at some other point in time. For now, we're just working with strings. So in this case, we can just return um, that hash function. So let's actually just seed this thing with some value. Let's call it a like a local hash, which is the this function here. And we'll just see that with zero by default. Then we can apply this hash function to our string, this um, our hashable, there's nothing else to do. If the type of our hashable equals to a big int or the type of um, our hashable is equal to 
a number so let's handle the numbers then we can return the hash of that same value just we need to wrap it as a string yes this is not the best way we could just add a hash function that's capable of dealing with numbers but I'm being lazy right now we should handle the undefined so I, I, all I'm doing is I'm reading these natives here right now and here we'll also just return some value I, I'm just returning some random odd numbers doesn't really matter because we're static um, they're always going to return the same value there's nothing we can really do about it there might be some studies and on which numbers are the best one to return for such static ones but I really don't think it matters so we've got the number types we've got string we've got null we've got undefined we still have to deal with Pauline so if the type of our hashable equals to boolean then we return the hash of the string and we could now write in here the boolean itself again if we wanted to or we could convert it to a number I'm going to convert it to a number this will turn to zero on false and one on true plus true equals one plus false equals zero so <clears throat> now that we've got all the easy stuff out of the way we can think start thinking about our array and our object so same check here if our hashable is an array then we can um, compute our hash. Now, one thing we want to happen is, and that is worth of note, is that we want the hash values. So I'm going to talk about a desirable value of hash functions. Um, hash functions should be distributed. So let's say you put in the a string of this shape hello world then the hash value of this string should be very far away for example where the, this one is capitalized so it's very similar values should not be in the same um, their their re related hash value shouldn't be also very close. That reduces collisions. We want basically a hash function to be kind of random where you hit uh, with a number. It depends on the data you're applying it to, which is why hash functions are so complicated, especially when you write a general purpose hash, fu hash function. But what I wanted to say is I want the hash of these two to be different from each other. So we know it's an array now. And we can now iterate through it, um, the hashable. We can reduce this and our initial value is going to be some static number again and for the aggregate then the next value your number I'm not sure why it claims it's a hashable because my initial value is a number 
To do that, we want to multiply our previous results times something. Um, there are studies on which numbers are good. I wrote aggregate weirdly. And which ones are bad. I'm just semi picking a random one again. Um, and then we can our hash of the previous value uh, of our um, next value, which is the, the hashable one here. Um, obviously, we should call ourself here recursively because it's a hashable. We don't know if it's a string or not, but it is certainly something that can be hashed using this function. And <clears throat> we'd like, let, let's think about this. Does this actually change the order? I think so it does, but what I'd like to do anyway is to add the seed here as well is a number which starts at zero and we can then see it here and here instead of actually hashing um, we want to use the let's just hash our seed basically Sorry, I've, I've got a new setup, so my microphone's in the way of my keys now. <laughs> right. Let me explain why I'm doing this. Let's imagine we have two nested arrays, like so. Um, one, two, three. Three. Then by rotating our seed, the inner hash will be different from the outer hash here. So I just find that more convenient. There's no real reason to do it, but it, it, I hope it will distribute the values better. Don't really have a better argument for it. Just makes me feel better. And if we have no values, we default to 17. Otherwise, we add the hash. That seems fine. So the last case is we are an object, in which case we want to go through our values. Now, the order we go through the keys matters. So if we hash two objects, and JavaScript does not make a guarantee of uh, about order, but if we hash two objects that look like this, like so, and the second object, which looks like this. They should have the same hash because they have the same properties, but it's possible that JavaScript will return our keys and our values in a different order for these two objects, even though they have the same properties. At least I think it's insertion order related. It's not quite insertion order. Let me look it up. Object JavaScript values order. And I'm going to be super lazy and just uh, copy that because our code over there already does it. I don't know why it's not complaining about self not existing because self certainly does not exist. But we can get the op, um, our entry values, well, entries. We can then, we don't need this one, we can then uh, sort them by their key, like we did on the other example. And now we can just do the exact same function we had here, just over the values of the Uh, just over the values. It actually failed. Because it says the typing is implicitly any.
Null or undefined? Yeah, because it doesn't recognize the hashable. Oh, because I wrote hashable. It should be values. Never mind. I take it back. This seems to work appropriately. And in theory, this should be it for a hashable hash function. We should export this. And let's run some tests. Con um, let's call hash with uh, null, for example. Let's call hash with uh, undefined. And with the array we had. And then twice with the objects I demonstrated before to make sure that we actually get the same value. So once it's just a value of a a and b to b. Let's copy this line. Invert their order and run this. Okay, so. We've got 1731, that is to expect it, they were hard-coded. The array has some number, and we can see that our two objects here actually have the same hash now. Now I wonder if that would happen if we remove the sorting. It does not. So that's why we need to sort, because otherwise our two values here are going to be diverging, and we obviously want them to have the same hash value. Another thing we want to test is if they are actually, if we change these, if they are distributed. I mentioned before, we don't want them to be close. There that seems to be a significant difference between them. And let's try it also on hello and hello, which is just one letter I had in, in one position. And we can see that they're also quite different from each other. Right, so we have our hash function. It's not the best hash function, and I'm sure there's going to be a lot of improvements over time to do to it. But for now, it serves the purpose of hashing an arbitrary object. We skipped a lot of the work with the typing because we just borrowed it from the um, equals. We're just going through our types here. Uh, we borrowed a different hash function from somewhere else. These values were determined by experiments, not myself. This is not my own hash function. There are plenty of hash functions out there. I just picked one that has a decent performance on strings. Feel free to leave a comment or join my Discord. And see you around.